Yes, welcome to Croft in North Yorkshire then for another day of racing from the 750 Motor Club, the Tequila Club Enduro Championship later on forms the centrepiece of our day's racing. But up first, it is indeed the Demon Tweaks Yokohama Low Cost Championship for their second of three races this weekend. The cars coming out onto the circuit now. Yesterday, we had a win for Tom Gard, his maiden victory in the Low Cost Championship in, after a couple of years of trying now, Louis Wall and Simon Walker Hansel second and third remarkable comeback yesterday from Simon Walker Hansel who started from the very back of the grid as you can see it's a very big grid of cars forming up the marshals doing their best to get them all into absolutely the right order we should have 38 of them out on track for what will be another 13 minutes plus one lap race the championship being led coming into this race by Martin West with his result yesterday, a sixth place finished, he took the championship lead on 48 points from Mark Burton on 44 and Tom Gadd on 40. Josh Sperrett up here with me in the comment box, looking forward to what should be two very good low-cost races today. Hey, good afternoon, Ian. Yes, it's going to be great, isn't it? We've had uh, three races in the low-cost championship so far, and we've had nine different people finish on the podium. So nobody finished on the podium more than more than the once. So it's very unpredictable. Um, so Cole Roussenard, he's won a race. So has Martin West and Tom Gadd. Other podium finishes come from Paul Clark, Mark Burton, Murray Shepherd, Tom Robinson... Um, and Louis Wall, as well as Simon Walker Hansel. So they're the drivers who have been on the podium. So as form suggests, perhaps none of those will finish on the podium in this race, and we'll see three uh, new drivers. Because, of course, the driver on pole position here, Peter Hatfield, is one of those drivers yet to finish on the podium. So that's very much a possibility that that uh, statistic continue in this race. Absolutely right. There you can see the, the magnitude of this grid of low cost, these 1300cc Ford cross-flow engine cars. There you can see the number two car of Murray Shepard just weaving into his position on the grid. He will line up on the inside of row three today. Uh, and this championship, having been around now for uh, more than two decades with the 750 Motor Club, and for a number of years, it's had this level of popularity with uh, very full grids wherever it goes. It's a particularly busy time of year for the low cost because we've got a triple header here this weekend at Croft, and in a fortnight's time, it's another triple header at the Anglesey Circuit. So it really is a decisive part of the season, even this early on in the year. The green flag waves and they go off onto their warming up lap then ahead of 13 minutes plus one lap of racing around the wonderful 2.1 mile Croft circuit former airfields uh, airfield circuit of course but uh, redesigned what about two decades ago now to uh, incorporate a tricky infield section but let's have a look at the grid then for this first race of the day set by the second fastest times from qualifying yesterday so it has Peter Hatfield on pole position. I'm afraid what you've got on the screen is not quite accurate. Peter Hatfield on pole position and Louis Wall alongside him. It's Tom Gadd and Carl Roycenars on the second row of the grid. Murray Shepard and Martin West row three. Paul Clark and Mark Burton on row four of the grid. On the fifth row, it'll be 48 Rob Fagg and 69 Greg Smith with Jack Johns and Andrew Tate on the sixth row. Seventh row will be Matt Groh and Sean Brame. Row eight, Rob Apsey and Glenn Boyer. Further back, Tim Penstone-Smith and Paul Keynes on row nine. Jonathan Lissiter and Jeff Peake will be on the 10th row of the grid. Dave Berry and David Johns row 11, with Hobie Vickerman and Craig Land rounding out the first 12 rows. Jack Chapman and Jonathan Higgins on row 13. Trevor Faunch and Jake Boydell row 14. 15th row will be Stephen Rice and Keith Malpas, ahead of Alex Artis and Russ Atwood. Paul Williamson and William Ward, Bill Ward on row 17. Keith Fryer and Gary Brandon, row 18. David Mason and Simon Walk Hansel right at the back of the grid. And that's uh, significant because Simon in yesterday's race came from the back of the grid. So 38th position to be well, talking to you, Josh Barrett, <laughs> on the podium. So that was quite, quite a remarkable drive. Absolutely. He's in one of the SRB racing cars, the Sam Richard Bradley team. And Richard Bradley, the boss of that team, was absolutely staggered that Simon Walker Hansel was able to do that, work his way through the order on not the easiest track to pass on. It was damp offline as well. Uh, we beat the lap record by about a second in those conditions with this new track surface at Croft. If 
which is much more grippy than in previous uh, the, the previous uh, tarmac that was down here. So lap record's going, and, and it should go again in this race because it was slightly damp yesterday, certainly offline, and therefore that, that drive we saw from Simon Walker Hansel was more impressive. The result from this race decides the grid for the one we'll see later on this afternoon. That's the one that Simon Walker Hansel said yesterday he's looking for, getting a good grid slot for that uh, race. We mentioned the SRB racing team. There's lots of those cars out on the grid. Got Team Sellers uh, racing, another big team here in the locals paddock, but lots of the drivers as well, Ian, run the cars themselves for a good mixture and the proper way that club racing should be done. We've got the teams and we've got the privateers. Absolutely right. Nice mix. Uh, some of these drivers have been racing at low cost for, for many years now, some brand newcomers as well. So we've got the cars onto the grid then. On pole position, it is the car of Peter Hatfield then, the white number six car. It's the 44, the black car with the uh, red roll cage or the Dayglow roll cage of Louis Wall. Second row, it's the number 12 car of Tom Gadd and the number 84 car of Carl Roissenars. The third row, it's number two, Murray Shepard, and number 94, Martin West. We're all set then for 13 minutes plus one lap of racing. And last couple of cars just coming into position. Yes, right at the back, I can see from our commentary box window, number 60, Simon Walker-Hansel is there, taking up his position alongside number 43, David Mason. The five-second board goes up. The red lights are about to go on. They do so now. And they go out. So away we go. A little bit of creeping from uh, Paul Keynes, it looked like, in the middle of the field. They all streak down towards Clervo Corner for the first time then. Let's see who comes out in front. It looks like it's Louis Wall that's got the best of the starts then. Pete Hatfield in second. Carl Roissenars in third. Tom Gad, yesterday's race winner, is in fourth position. Now, can they all make it through Clervo safely for the first time? Some more cancels already made up, what, 15 places or something like that by the time we got to the first corner. That's remarkable stuff, Josh. Absolutely fantastic. The uh, former Formula BMW driver, M3 Cup winner more recently, and he's uh, he used to overtaking lots of cars because he won the uh, C1 24 hours after starting 99 from the grid just a few weeks ago. So watch out for car number 60. There he is, Simon Walker Hansel. But the front, it's Louis Wall. Second, Peter Hatfield on the inside for third place and get in that position. Yesterday's race winner, Tom Gadd. That was the first time he had won in a low cost. So he's there in third place behind the top two, heading up towards the Jim Clark S's for the first time. Absolutely flat out in these cars. See some side by side action in the middle. That involves Tim Petstone Smith, who was telling me this morning he made some setup changes for this race and is looking to move forward. Boards as they make their way down. Glenn Boyer there trying to gain the place just ahead. But there's Paul Keynes, just ahead of Sean Brain. Brain looking to the inside as they head into Sunny. Sideways is Keynes, yet stock hatch and hot hatch racer. Sideways also there was Tim Penstone Smith in number 47. But right behind him, right round the outside of him, comes Simon Walker Hansel. Yeah, so Simon Walker Hansel already well up the order. We'll get a, an exact position when he comes through to end lap one. They're at the complex now for the first time, and it's Tom Gadd that's made his way from fourth at Clairvaux up to second place now behind Louis Wall. Peter Hatfield there in third place. Carl Voicenos fourth for the moment, but trying to come up on the inside of him is Martin West, and he, I think, has just about got fourth place away. He might even get third here because he gets a good run on Carl Voicenos now as they come down the start and finish straight towards Clairvaux Corner for the start of the second lap. West's going to be on the outside line, though. And look at that. They're bump drafting behind Royce and Ars and Peter Hatfield as they uh, head into Clervo Corner. And it's worked for them because they're both ahead of West. But now Hatfield runs briefly through the gravel. Bit sideways there for understeering. Terribly wide was Cole Roussenard. But uh, he gets through there in third. That is allowing the top two to get away, though. That's Louis Wall and Tom Cad. These two got away yesterday, too up to 18th it was for Simon Walker Hansel so he passed half of the grid on lap number one of the 13 minutes plus one lap race around the cross circuit uh, we've got a spin up Martin West to spurn and he's just about kept that out of the barrier so didn't quite see how that started but uh, he's lost several places that really does drop him out of contention he's now there with Paul Keynes, who was in 15th place. So he's down to about well, 15th place now by the looks of it. Where was Simon Walker Hansel, by the way, at the end of that one? Yeah. He was up to 18th position, wasn't he? Yep, gained half the uh, position. So looked at Louis Wall's car. Wasn't sure if the uh, bonnet was just coming up um, adrift on that car. We'll get another look at that in a moment. But I, my attention was distracted by the spin for Martin West, the uh, championship leader. Yes, Louis Wall's bonnet is um, coming a jar isn't it? Mark Burton's got a mud guard going too. That's not so much of a problem. It's a bigger problem for Louis Wall, I would suggest, as he loses the lead into the complex through. Into the lead goes yesterday's race winner, Tom Gadd. 
Yeah, so I wonder what's caused that issue for Lee Wall, whether it's just a, a bit of a, a bonnet pin or something that's not quite been put down. As Hatfield makes a move on Royce and I's there at the complex, so he moves up into third place. It looks like Murray Shepherd in the XE and Ali car number two is trying to follow him through, but the leader's already out of the hairpin, coming through to complete the second lap of the race, and it's Tom Gad starting to pull away now from the aerodynamically hampered Louis Wall. He sets the fastest lap of the race, but it's the first flying lap, of course. Meanwhile, here comes Murray Shepherd about to challenge Carl Royce and R's for fourth place. Going to be on the inside line for Clairvaux Corner, and he goes through to P4. That's a new lap record, not quite for Tom Gadd, it's about half a second away, I think, from yesterday's yeah. best, which was Louis Wall yesterday. But I suspect, as you mentioned, that car very much un aerodynamic, the car in second place. Looks like it's buckled the bonnet too on Louis Wall's machine. Whatever's gone wrong there, that car's going to be losing. Well, I say that's going to be losing straight line speed, but he gets closer to the leader in the slipstream. But it's certainly going to hamper Wall's race. Side by side for third. This is Murray Shepard, who started the lap in fifth place. He's now in third because he goes up the inside of Peter Hatfield, who'd already passed Cole Rusnard, last year's champion, last year's free time cross race winner, Mark Burton, there at the back of that group in sixth position. Roos and Ards now, they're going side by side with Peter Hatfield. So Hatfield, who was third at the beginning of the lap, is just about going to hang on to fourth place, actually, through the Jim Clark S's. Cole Roos and Ards gave it a good go to go by, though, and Mark Burton still there in sixth. Gap back to what looks like now Paul Clark ahead of Greg Smith in that position. We'll see if that pair can work together to claw in this podium position battle. Yeah, so it's two for the lead. It's four for the next place, and then there's about four of them in the next sweep as well. We've got green flags waving at the exit of Sunny, which suggests that someone has gone off in the first part of the ah, there's some debris there. It's someone's wheel arch that has uh, gone off and is just lying in the middle of the circuit at Sunny Inn. Here's this battle then for third place with uh, Murray Shepard now at the head of that group. Mark Burton at the back of it. He's got something trailing from his car by the uh, looks of it. I'll try and get a look on that through our window in a minute as he comes past me. But he's still there in uh, that second group. It's yeah, so something from around the exhaust. Maybe some uh, uh, exhaust baffling or something that's uh, coming out. But as they come through, it is still Tom Gad leading by three quarters of a second from Louis Wall. New fastest lap for Murray Shepard, so he's catching in the top two, 142.7 for him. Um, I noticed that Mark Burton lost his mudguard through the uh, complex here, so I wonder if that just if that was anything to do with the issue on the exhaust. But there's Louis Wall's car with that bonnet issue down the back straight they go down towards Tower Bend this is where the slipstream comes into effect Louis Wall is able to go with Tom Gadd in the tow uh, there behind Murray Shepard holding on ahead of Peter Hatfield just about and the pair of those just look like they've broken away from the Carl Roussinard and Mark Burton battle in seventh position Paul Clark's got away from Greg Smith after passing him last time by and Smith is under pressure from both Jack Johns and Rob Fagg leaders coming down towards Barcroft with Tom Gadd still just ahead of Louis Wall who's chasing he is turning their way through soon then past that David he's not really on the racing line so it should of course too many problems watching them and collect that now as they turn their way out of Sunny Out. Then it is the top two. Murray Shepard trying to go with them, but Peter Hatfield's not really letting him get away. There's Paul Clark, you can see Greg Smith, number 69 in eighth place there as well. They've got a black and orange mechanical warning flag on the pit wall. I would be surprised if that wasn't for Louis Wall, to be honest with you, number 44, given the damage that he's got to the front of his car. And what that flag means is the driver would have to go to the pits to get that sorted out. Murray Shepard's made a gap this time to Peter Hatfield, who's um, been closed in by the cars behind. Cole Roussard and Mark Burton are closed. And Paul Clark looks to me like he's catching all of them as they exit the hairpin and accelerate across the line to complete lap number four of this race. And indeed, it is Louis Wall who's been given that mechanical flag. But let's watch Roussard and Burton because Burton's right in the slipstream, heading down into the first corner here at Crofton. Mark Burton goes through, doesn't run too wide. So a, a place gained, big lick of flame out the side of that car. Mark Burton into fifth. Uh, don't forget, Mark Burton won all three races here at Croft last year, and uh, so far this weekend, well, he had a fifth place in race one, and he's uh, just moved into fifth place here as well. So we'll see if he can improve on that, maybe get onto the podium today. He'll be chasing after the cars in front of him. Tom Gadd's lead now extended to 1.03 seconds over Louis Wall at the uh, start of this, the fifth lap of the race yesterday. Uh, it was a slightly shortened race, so we only got seven laps, but we should get a little bit more than that uh, today. That's because we had a red flag in the early stages yesterday. Five minutes plus one lap of this race left to go. We're watching Peter Hatfield there in fourth place, Mark Burton fifth, and Carl Roissenars in sixth place. Simon Walker Hansel didn't come through at the end of the last lap, so he, uh, not since the transponder issue, looks like he's out of the race. Mark Burton gains another place into Sunny this time. He goes past Peter Hatfield. 
so that is two places gained within a lap now Burton's at the front of the queue can he close in on Murray Shepherd who had made a gap down into the complex come the leaders it's still Gad and Wall they're still fairly much together with Murray Shepherd there in third a gap back to Mark Burton a bit sideways was Cole Roots and in between the pair of them is Peter Hatchwood on the back of this queue is Paul Clark the four through to seventh this is the best battle on the out of the uh, front runners turn their way into the hairpin just under five minutes uh, of as this race to go as we can see there into the pits comes the number 44 car Louis Wall he's seen the black and orange flag I think the black flag was about to be shown to him as well so the man that was running in second place has had to come into the pit lane now to get that scene to one of the 750 most club scrutineers will be on the scene just to try and make sure that that car is safe to go back out again the tank tape is being called into action as you can see on the inset there meanwhile there is Martin West in eighth position as he comes back up the order after that spin approaching tower on the second lap of the race and this is the battle now for fifth and sixth card Royce and Paul Clark right together Clark in the pale green car with the yellow mud guards is challenging and we've lost another car that stopped down here on the start and finish straight as well we'll try and work out who that is Louis Wall is losing a lot of time isn't he uh, with this pit stop it's Andrew Tate I believe he yeah. stopped here so he's out of the race too the team still going to work I think that's uh yeah, it's almost there, aren't they? <laughs> Trying to make sure that's as secure as possible. But as you say, they're going to drop to the back. That's going to be the back for the next race. So a really unfortunate day for Louis Wall. But he is now the battle of third place, isn't it, led by Mark Burton? Yeah, it is. So they're chasing after Murray Shepherd. Uh, only about a second behind Shepherd. Uh, Tom Gadd now has a lead of almost three seconds, which is almost unheard of in low-cost terms, isn't it, to have uh, a lead so significant? Although that was his victory margin in yesterday's race, 2.8 seconds. He'll be hoping to convert that from his uh, first win yesterday to his second ever low-cost win today. That gap was only because Louis Wall went off at the end of the it race, was. wasn't it? He was very much under pressure up until that point. Leaders making their way up to the hairpin. This is about the third that continues. Mark Burton ahead of Peter Hatford, Cold Roussard and Paul Clark. So the four-car battle make their way off the hairpin using all that kerb on the exit of the corner. And it's Roussard and Clark that are the closest. So Clark in the slipstream, accelerating off of the hairpin, coming up to VMAX speed before breaking into Clairvaux. Using the middle of the circuit is Cole Roussard. So that forces Paul Clark to look to the outside. One of the leaders ran a bit wide by the look scene. You can see the, the dust settle in there. Behind it, side by side, Martin West, who's not having the greatest of races here, the championship leader, trying to get past Greg Smith. I don't do it, of course, though. Martin West spun, didn't he? So actually, he's doing a good recovery drive here, is Martin West. He dropped to the back of the top 20. He's up into eighth position. Now Paul Clark, has he got damage to the front of his car? Yeah, he's slowing, isn't he? So I think possibly... Uh, no, he's still there, isn't oh, no. he? Oh, yeah. He's but still there. Wasn't sure if there was a bit of damage to the, the nose cone. There's some more side-by-side -side action. That's Matt Grow and Tim Pentstone-Smith with Sean Brain behind. Really battles all the way through the low-cost championship. And that's David Mason as well, number 43. He's in 15th place. He started alongside Simon Will cancel on the back row of the grid. So he's had another uh, a really good run through the field. He's been a driver we've seen up at the Sharp in the past as we're watching this side by that side action for 7th and 8th then and Martin West getting ahead there of Greg Smith who had a race win at Castle Coombe last season up towards Barcroft they go you can see them both really hustling on but Martin West pulling out a few car lengths now over Smith as he gets up to 7th place and trying to try to limit the damage as far as the championship point situation is concerned Tom Gaz looking good here to move a little bit closer to the top of the standings if things stay this way You've got Jack Johns behind, then Glenn Boyer going well inside the top ten, just ahead of Rob Fagg, who had a good opening low-cost weekend at Donington Park, running here in 11th, just ahead of Tim Stone smith who leads the next group through. There is Rob Fagg, car number 48, chasing Glenn Boyer up towards the hairpin. The pair of them trying to catch Jack Johns, who's latched onto the back of Greg Smith's car. They're going on to the penultimate lap of this race, so as Ian suggests, it'll be a nine-lapper of the Croft Circuit. Just thinking about uh, that, that uh, Rob Fagg of course, he had that off into the barriers yesterday, so good work to get that car fixed overnight. And slowing is Tim Penstone Smith, number 47, you can see there, the Union flag car just uh, going slowly along the pit straight, being left standing now by Matt Groh and Sean Brame as they head down to Clairvaux in 12th and 13th. And David Mason has now caught them. He mentioned a few moments ago that David Mason coming through from the back of the grid. You know, there's a nose cone in the gravel trap there at Clairvaux, so somebody's had an instant earlier the free car battle then grow brame and mason turn their way through the chicane a good run from david mason he's going to gain a position here is he up towards tower bend sean brame defends the line david mason thinks i'll gain two places then as they go down towards tower is he going to get this done round the outside of 
They both get past Matt Crow in the end, don't they? John Bray went up the inside of him. David Mason went round the outside of the pair. So he's in 12th now. Yeah, so uh, Mason having a good race here. I don't think he can get up into the top 10. There's a bit of a gap to be made up there before he can do so. There is the fight going on for 5th and 6th between Carl Royce, number 84, and Paul Clark, number 82. Tom Gadds went through shot there, but challenge on now for 2nd and 3rd position because Mark Burton, the reigning champion, has caught Murray Shepard, Paul Clark's nose code. It probably was in the gravel at Clairvaux corner, because you can see that is missing. So he probably was the one that went through the gravel at Clairvaux a couple of laps ago. The leader, Tom Gadd, is coming through about to start his final lap of the race. He looks to have a safe margin in hand over Murray Shepard, who's still 2nd. 3rd place, number 1, Mark Burton. Fourth place, number six, and then these two, Carl Roycenars and Paul Clark, 84 and 82 as they head down. But it's side by side now as they go into Clever on the final lap. And who is going to prevail? It looks like Murray Shepard for the moment. Looked to me like Mark Burton breaked a bit early. He, he knew how to win around here last year, didn't he, with all those passes um, down towards Tower Bend. Is he going to do the same? He will only be for second place, but he's... He's teeing up uh, Murray Shepard as they go through the chicane. But a good run through there for Murray Shepard in the XD and Alley car. Of course, that's the car that Mark Burton was battling with here last year. And I don't think he's going to be close enough, is Mark Burton. They're catching the leader, aren't they? Tom Gadd, yeah. who with three seconds ahead, did he get caught up in the traffic through the chicane, maybe? Let's bring in these cars behind. Closer, Murray Shepard out of over the grass on the exit of the corner. Is that all the problem was for Tom Gadd? Is he back up to speed now? I think he is. They go through the Jim Clark Essex for the final time, Ian. Yeah, it looks Ooh. like it. And it is now raining as well. A bit more big moment there for Murray Shepard. That surely gives a chance for Mark Burton to go through. But no, it doesn't. So he can't capitalise. And you can see now on the track, there is a bit of evidence of that moisture on the circuit as well. There's been heavy spots of rain for, for the last hour or so here. But now it's definitely getting a lot heavier. So a real challenge for the drivers as they come through the Ooh. final few corners. Ooh. And out of shape again is Murray Shepard as he pushes on, trying to keep Mark Burton at bay. Tom Gallagher is, though, that still leads as he heads into the complex for the final time. So number 12, Tom Gadd from Lincolnshire, the winner of the race yesterday. His first ever race win in the low-cost championship. Looks like he's going to go on and do the same today. Meanwhile, fifth and sixth still being sorted out as well. But Gad there, number 12, heading out of the final corner. He sees the chequered flag now, which is waved at him for the second time this weekend. And Tom Gad wins the latest round, round four of the Demon Tweaks Yokohama Low Cost Championship by just under two seconds from Murray Shepard, who, despite a couple of hairy moments on the final lap, took second place. Mark Burton was third. Peter Hatfield, number six, was fourth. 82, Paul Clark was fifth. 84, Carl Roycenars was sixth. And Martin West, Greg Smith, Jack Johns and Glenn Boyd should be the next car through, but we've lost someone in the grass, in the farmer's field. Is that Glenn Boyer? Because he's... No, he's come through now. He was falling down your chart um, on your uh, left-hand side, the Alpha Live timing chart, but we continue to work out who this is who's out in the cornfield. It's a, a typical uh, cross shot, that, isn't yeah. it, Ian? And the slippery conditions uh, catching one of them out. But they, it was a big slide, wasn't it, from Murray Shepard coming off of uh, the sunny out. Got a big old twitch on and saved that really well. But this, for the first time all year, we've got somebody who's uh, been on the podium twice. And actually, all the drivers have been on the podium for the second time. Tom Gadd, the first double winner of the year. Murray Shepard, he finished third at the opener. He gets second here. Mark Burton finished third in the second race at Donington. And he's back on the podium too. So... Now perhaps we're just starting to see things start to settle down in the Locals Championship after a crazy couple of races, really, at Donington Park. So we're starting to perhaps see who the four men are this year. And Tom Gadd uh, certainly put in a, a good stead so far on this weekend. Another race to go yet. So uh, a first win for him yesterday, and now he gets a second one to join in too. So a great weekend from Tom Gadd. Yeah, absolutely right. And uh, that non-finish at Donington Park in the second race there, a bit of a setback for him. That may well be one of his dropped scores at the end of the year. But he showed all the pace uh, at Donington, but uh, now he's getting the results to, uh, to go along with it as well. And he's heading a little bit further towards the top of the championship standings. So the rain really did come down towards the end of that race. And uh, fortunately, I don't think it had quite the impact that it might have done. Let's have a look at the results then. Tom Gad it was that took the win with uh, a 1.98 second margin over Murray Shepard. Mark Burton was third ahead of Peter Hatfield, Paul Clark and Carl Roycenars. Martin West, after a spin, came back to seventh place, having had, a bit of, having had a bit of a scrap with Greg Smith, Jack Johns and the ex uh, pot hat racer Rob Fragg rounding out the top ten. David Mason was 11th ahead of Sean Brame. Good scrap going on there and David Mason came through from the back, of course. 
then Glenn Boyer and Matt Gro Gro 13th and 14th. Craig Land was in 15th position. Looking further down the order, we will see that 21st was Paul Keynes, lost a couple of positions during the race. David Johns and Alex Artis both made progress in the right direction. Then Russ Atwood, Jake Bordell and Stephen Wright. Louis Wall was 27th. Well, congratulations. Uh, that was uh, a lively end to the race there. He pulled out a big lead after Louis' penalty and then the rain came. Yeah, well, as a... We got away again like we did in the first race and I saw his bonnet fly up and I thought, I was praying it didn't fly off in front of me, but I thought they were maybe going to let him get away with it, but they obviously didn't, but it gave me that big enough gap just to sort of keep that lead, but then towards the end with the back markers, it sort of caught him in all the wrong place and I saw Mark and uh, Murray working together, I thought I was going to catch him at the, just the wrong time, but well, managed to hold on. By our reckoning, or by my very rough maths anyway, we think you're the championship leader now as well by about five points. Not a bad weekend's work so far. <laughs> no. <it's laughs> It's uh, not that bad. Uh, nice to hear that I'm championship leader for the first time. But uh, you know, we, uh, I'd like to dedicate that race to my granddad. We lost him earlier in the year, and uh, it's uh, it's just yeah, that's for him. So it's yeah, great news. Nicely done. Well done. I like to go get dry. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> right then, second place was Murray Shepherd. Now Murray's over this way, I think. So let's go and grab him. Uh, Murray, Hello. Uh, a solid second place finish there. No, thank um, you. Tricky with the weather coming in there towards the end, wasn't it? Low-cost races are never easy, and that one, I'm sure, was even harder than normal. Well, I don't think I've ever raced in a low-cost race where there isn't either a few spits of drizzle in the collecting <laughs> area or out on track. I actually really like it because um, a lot of drivers uh, panic under rain, and I felt a few specks coming down, saw a few specks on my visor and thought, ah, oh, this is good. And Mark and I started working together, and, uh, but, well, yeah, I can't say that, but we were catching up with the leader and, uh, and a, a few more laps of this, and we might have been in with a win. What's the new surface like in the wet? Because I've heard drivers say it's not actually as slippery as they expected. No, it, it's, uh, it's a lot better than it used to be. Um, there's a lot of grip there. I had a walk around last night and you can feel it under your foot. It's just a really, really um, grippy kind of surface. And it works really well in the rain, so you can be quite confident as long as you uh, stay on line. But the, the problem is the wet line doesn't become that effective anymore. So people that stick on the racing line still have quite a lot of grip. So um, pros and cons. Speaking of confidence then, what are your thoughts for race three? Uh, well, I'm not sure where I'm going to start on the grid, but that doesn't actually really matter in low-cost racing. So um, I'll just uh, try and catch a toe off Tom if I can, and, um, and we'll just uh, help each other out and try and bring it down to the last lap and see what happens. Sounds easy. Well done. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks very much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. So third place then in that one Oops, went the way of Mark Burton, who is there. Uh, Mark, uh, congratulations. Appalling conditions there towards the end of the last race, lap. but a uh, yeah. last lap or so particularly challenging. Yeah, it was... Um, it started coming down and I like the wet. Um, I'm having a few problems with my car, so wet brings me back into it. And I was thinking, yes. But it wasn't as grippy on that last lap as it was in testing on Friday in the wet. And so I think Murray and I both sort of just took a step back and thought, we're in a good place here. Let's not bin it trying to go for one more. So a bit of an anticlimax, but it was a good race up until then. Yeah, good race. Solid championship points as well. And at this early stage of the year, that's the key, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's not going as well as I wanted this year, I must admit, after last year. Um, that's a fifth and a third today. And a third today. So, yeah, I can't be too disappointed, I think, all things considered. Yeah. Race three coming up later on. I suppose you'll be hoping the rain stays around, won't rain. you? Yeah, I want rain. That'd be great. I was quick in the rain on Friday. Um, I like the rain anyway. Um, and this track, the new surface, they've done a great job here. The, the grip in the wet is phenomenal. It's like nothing else. So it'll be good fun if it's wet. Yeah, brilliant. Well, looking forward to it. Congratulations Thank on the podium. You. Thanks very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. So there you have it then, an entertaining opening race of the day with the uh, Yokohama Demon Tweaks Low Cost Championship once again providing plenty of thrills and spills. The rain now well and truly moving in as we head over uh, to a qualifying session for the main event. This is the Club Enduro Championship. The cars, hopefully before too much longer, will be heading out onto the circuit. So back over to you, Ian and Josh.